So welcome everyone to the uh, Novak Eclipse Planning Group SIG meeting uh, for the first day of August, 2023. Um, we had a, a good hands-on session last month where people got to practice with some hardware. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, I think 10 people showed up, 10 or 11 people. We're gonna do that again. We can talk about the schedule of that towards the end as we talk about the next meetings. Um, so tonight, the main topic is gonna to be what people have already planned. Uh, two, two major things, one going over uh, what people submitted in their surveys and uh, the other is just to have a roundtable discussion with with everybody who's online for them to contribute what they've learned and what they've decided and what they still need to do. Um, one of the things I did want to mention to make sure everyone knows about it is we now have the Groups IO forum, uh, and I, I won't be doing any distribution of of information specifically about the eclipse that gets generated by by the SIG or members of the SIG or things that I find or get contributed, uh, we'll post those on this uh, Groups IO group, which is uh, very efficient. Uh, get to open it up as long as we have less than 100 users, which, uh, which is our situation, then it's free. So it's easy enough to get started. Uh, it has just about all the features we need except file sharing, but we still have our, um, our Dropbox, uh, I'm sorry, our, our Google Drive account for sharing files if that comes up. And, and this will be in the slides, which will be posted. Uh, and as always, that file sharing is at bit.ly. Uh, if you're familiar with it, it's bit.ly slash capital T, capital S, capital E, total solar eclipse 2024. So bit.ly is a, is a URL compressor and uh, TSE 2024 is our file sharing account there. And you'll see the August meeting slides and the videos when they're posted all end up on that file system, plus other resource uh, resources we've collected in the past. Um, and partially, I, I was reminded to get this going because some people made comments in the survey uh, asking, that there be a place where they can post observing results, experiences from the past, questions and information sources they have, uh, getting down to some very specific things in case people want to arrange travel together or see where people are staying in the neighborhood. Uh, people have a clue of, as to a, a place to stay, either a uh, hotel B&B &B that still has room or a camping area that, that might be uh, desirable. That kind of uh, distributed information could be more easily shared on the group's IO situation. Uh, one of the things which I went through and did as I set that up was come up with a fairly comprehensive list of hashtags, uh, both for information topics and when it gets to observing sites, I have some areas to find. So you can put a hashtag for the kind of information you're sharing, and if appropriate, the geographical area uh, based on, on where people are going and the various kinds of observing domains that make sense, all the way from uh, Southern Mexico up to the uh, maritime provinces. I think I ended up with eight regions that should be useful for identifying information. Uh, just wanna mention that Novak's Eclipse uh, Viewer Acquisition Program is in progress. Uh, we, we, we have information that the uh, donation from MITRE was received. Uh, Dan's working with uh, Tommy Domingue, uh, the Novak treasurer on, on getting that going. Um, we'll distribute information about that over groups IO and um, there'll be some general notifications to Novak members also because um, it, it's for the, obviously Eclipse classes work for partial phases. So it's important for members who aren't going to the center line to have it as well as 
people who are traveling to the center line. And it'll also be distributed as part of uh, outreach. And it may be the point, I'm not sure the total quantity they ended up buying, uh, but it may be that each Novak member gets 20 or 30 or 40 to distribute in their neighborhoods or some other means to schools. Uh, but I think the amount of money we had should be enough uh, to have bought quite a few uh, viewing goggles. And these are obviously approved type. Uh, we're only getting them from, uh, is it from American Paper Optics stand? Do you know? Is that who they ended up with or, or Symphony? Yeah, American Paper Optics, which is a good outfit. So that's moving along. Next slide, please, Pamela. Okay, so here, here the eclipse report, uh, the, I'm sorry, the uh, survey report. And um, I just uh, did, did some graphics this afternoon. Uh, as I think I said, we have now 70 responses to it. Um, uh, Elizabeth Warner just sent hers in late. So um, most of the people who responded who are paying attention to the SIG um, have made their reservations about three quarters, but a quarter is still up in the air about where they're going to stay and exactly where they're going to observe from. Uh, I have, uh, if you go to the next slide, I have a couple others on where they're going or where they're staying. Uh, a little bit more than half are doing conventional hotels, B&Bs, or rental housing. Uh, about one-sixth in the red quadrant down the lower left are staying with family. Um, the yellow section to the left, camping in our, or RVing or similar. Uh, we have a few people who are doing other things. One person may be misunderstood, but will plan on just driving out to the center line and going back. Uh, two people are have uh, seem to have eclipse cruises. Uh, one person's going to some special event. I think that's probably the Texas Star Party uh, special camp event. And um, about one out of seven people who responded don't, don't know where they're staying yet. So those are the kind of people we have to support. Uh, although I think it's getting to the point where we should be spending more time supporting people who have made arrangements and know they're going because that's getting to be the majority, or uh, certainly the majority of the people who are participating. Next slide. Uh, this is uh, where people are going in my hashtag codes of uh, of uh, areas. So starting at the top and going clockwise, 3% uh, of, well, 3% of 60, uh, 70 people is about two people. So two people are going to Southern Mexico, two are going to Northern Mexico or the Rio Grande Valley. And those first two areas are those that uh, have the absolute best weather prospects. Um, <clears throat> then when you go to the area of San Antonio and, and north up through Dallas, about half of the people are going, are planning to go to that, that area uh, where the climatology deteriorates quite a bit, but it's still pretty good. Um, a few people going to Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. Um, very few seem to be going to Illinois, Indiana. There's no particular, uh, the weather's pretty bad in there, climatology. Ohio is uh, sort of the next most popular with about one fifth of the people going there. Then you go up to Western Pennsylvania, which is the area of Erie, has a nice state park on the coast there. And Western New York, Buffalo, uh, and I, I define that as up through Rochester. And then uh, Adirondacks and East is that 98 group. Um, Adirondacks, uh, Vermont, Maine, and the Maritimes. A few people say they're going there. I think there it's um, mainly combining it with a, a trip to someplace they want to go or they have family and friends in that area. There's no particular good reason to expect to see the eclipse there, both because the weather prospects, <coughs> excuse me, weather prospects are deteriorating and the solar elevation is getting low by the hit, time you hit the Adirondacks. The next slide um, sort of duplicates the information. I, I had put this question in, how far are you traveling? 
Um, the red, uh, one person said they were going less than 50 miles. I'm not sure if we have a person out there or he was just talking about how far he's going from where he's staying. Uh, about a quarter of the people are within what I consider day travel area, uh, out to 400 miles, which includes um, uh, the region out to Dayton. Uh, beyond that, between 400 and 1500 miles, which is sort of the region to North Texas, uh, that's the plurality of the majority of the people mainly because it includes much of the areas of Texas where people are going. <clears throat> and then you have a few people going a little bit further, which is Southern Texas and Mexico, uh, including cruises, which are leading, leaving from Mazatlan. Next slide. Um, how are you going? This was not very interesting. Uh, obviously the people who are within a couple of days are driving and then about a quarter of the people are flying further away. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting, I think, what people are planning on doing. Uh, and I had to dig into this. It was a little bit, it was worded not the best way. I tried to pull out visual only as opposed to people who have some sort of video. Obviously, everyone, whether they're doing visual only or photography, will look at the eclipse, will try to look at the eclipse. Uh, naked eye to get the impression of it. Uh, so I tried to uh, pull out from the responses what number of people were um, were doing visual only. And this is not percentages. This is a uh, number of people out of, uh, I think there was 68 in this sample. So roughly a third are doing visual only. And then video streaming, simple photography with a point and shoot kind of camera, or dedicated photography with uh, a telescope, a telephoto lens, specialized cameras, or thus. Uh, a lot of those were multiple. So uh, people are doing one, two, or three of those things. So um, <clears throat> those numbers don't add up to 100%. They're, they're more than 100%. Uh, but to some extent, I'm glad to see that at least a third of the people are just planning on enjoying the view, which is a a good attitude to have. Any comments on, on any of this so far? I don't want it to be just me talking. Tends to be. Nope. Okay, well, let's, let's go on. So the next thing I want to do is go around and ask people here to talk about what they're planning on doing. I, I assume most of the people who are dialing in are, are actively planning and probably have their arrangements made. Uh, I, I can start with, well, I won't start with mine unless absolutely everybody clams up, but let me, let me pick a target and, and ask someone to start. And let me start with you, Rich. Um, could you talk about what you've planned to do? And Sure. Not a problem at all. Um, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of plans at this point of uh, uh, at this point, I've got uh, uh, reservations at a hotel in Killeen, Texas. So that's my target. My wife and I are planning to drive down there or, or meet down there at the appropriate time. We have several day reservations. Uh, I've been particularly interested in uh, Debbie, the um, um, presentation we had, I've been trying to trying to um, link up with the people have had some problems doing that, but at least based on the briefing we had and some email communication I had, I got an equipment list to um, uh, at least participate in their uh, overall program, uh, most of which I've procured at this point. So, um i'm kind of on the on on track with regard to doing what i want to do which is to collect some relevant data on on the eclipse and be able to feed that into the bigger uh, picture that's being assembled um that's 
I'm going to be driving there. So that's kind of the whole story that I have to date. Yeah. Will you be, uh, will you be staying at a place that's on the central line within the central line or you're going to have to travel? Close. What's that? Colleen, Texas is pretty close. So you still have to, tra you won't be able to set up at the hotel. That's a big, that will be a big question. And what I'll be looking for to everyone who's participating, because if there are so many people from um, Novak going down there, um, I'm hoping to uh, leverage off of what they're planning, where they're planning to congregate and being close to the center line with a car should be able to go anywhere uh, that makes sense. Did, did you check out, uh, somebody submitted, I forget who it was, a list of the Texas state parks that were, I believe, on the center line. I have um, not done that. Okay, because I think I think that's that's one of the things on the resource page. I didn't I mean, pay I'm much attention. I'm less concerned with the center line per se, because from what the the information we have from previous briefings, being somewhat off the center line doesn't really result in too many minute, uh, too many, too much time a decrease in too much times uh, well yeah I, when i say center line I, so, you know it's it's I, I should be saying the path of totality not not the not the center there's of there's a uh, big difference obviously yeah yeah uh, um, and yeah. I mean, you can be i can i have be, reservations within the path of totality but but not on the center line oh okay because you know roughly within 70 percent of the diameter sure of the width you're pretty good. There's a cosine dependence on it. And that was my conclusion. Uh, yeah. And um, I, I would think for the purposes of Debbie, there's actually some advantage because as you move north and south across the center line, you're going to see more or less of the north of the southern or northern prominences. Mm -hmm. um, it, it depends on how the moon is placed with respect to the sun. If you're on the center line itself, you're only going to see the east and west prominences mostly. Um, Dan, since since Rich mentioned Debbie, why don't I ask you next? Because I know you're doing Debbie also. Yeah, I'm also uh, planning on doing Debbie. And uh, I am, uh, those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, a couple of months ago, Matt Penn uh, spoke to us and the Debbie is the, is the uh, Dynamic Eclipse Broadcast Initiative. Uh, my expectation is the gear, once once I get it set up, aligned and such, I can turn it on and then I can focus on visual observing and, and commuting with my family. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to Texas for the annular and I'm going to uh, current plan is to go to Bloomington, Indiana for the uh, uh, total eclipse, which is my wife's alma mater. But we're actually going to stay in Cincinnati, which is just outside the path of totality because the hotel prices were considerably lower once you get outside the, uh, the totality path. And uh, from there, we're, we really see there's quite a wide swath that we can go early the day of the eclipse or even the night before we needed to. So we'll just watch the weather patterns and we may end up you know, on the beach with Alan or something, but that's a that's like a six hour drive from there, I think. But, <laughs> but you know, we, we know from past planning, we will keep ourselves adaptable watching weather forecasts, but, um, Hotel, stay in a Holiday Inn in Texas and Uvalde for the uh, annular. Uh, no real issues for the annular. It's not nearly as hot. But uh, and I'm there. I'm meeting up with uh, an old high school buddy and uh, some relatives that live in Texas, and and you know we're looking forward to that. And uh, I'm connected with the San Antonio Astronomical Association. And uh, Rich, you might want to check out their website. Uh, as, as well, because they, they have a number of uh, sites that they're going to be observing for both eclipses. Um, I, I figure for th 30 bucks for a year's membership, you know, uh, gets me invited to all their activities, even if I don't go to anything. Um, but the, uh, and the, it was a sudden change, actually. We had planned to go to Texas for the total eclipse outside of Dallas, where I have a lot of family. 
But uh, a couple of weeks ago, we made a long trip, and my wife said after a six-hour drive in the car, there's no way she was willing to drive all the way to Texas. Uh, so, <laughs> so we adapted to a day's drive to uh, Indiana or Ohio, actually, is where we're going to stay, but then drive for the eclipse. So that's it. Hey, Dan, okay. my flex, my my response to that is my wife's not interested in the drive either. She's gonna fly and meet me there, so that's <laughs> you know, that, that that that's that's a workable option. <laughs> my my wife has always been a white knuckle flyer, and she swears she will never ever get on another airplane again for the rest of her life. So oh, really, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I I don't mind. I would hop on planes and do all of this myself, but uh, that's what I'm doing for the uh, annular. Is I'm flying to San Antonio and renting a car. And, well, actually, is it? I, I think there's a decent train to Cincinnati. You can take the uh, uh, the train that goes to Chicago. Yeah, that's actually that's a good idea. Except, yeah. uh, except they're, for they're not my cheap, beer. but they're not cheap. Yeah. But it's a way to see the. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you see the country or the backside of the country, but you, it's it's something different for most people these days. Okay, good. Thanks, Dan. Um, Charlie, uh, have you got your plans set? You want to talk about yours? What you? Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh... I'm going to Niagara Falls. It's it's right pretty much in the center of totality. And uh, it uh, I basically all the cheap ones were sold out. I had to pay exorbitant price for two nights. I'm driving up uh, Sunday, uh, going out to the uh, state park, which is five minutes from the hotel, and uh, sit up there uh, for the eclipse. And then spending another night and driving back the next day. But uh, I, I just made sure that I had uh, reservation cancellation 24 hours uh, because I'm going to check closely the weather in, in Niagara Falls before I even get in a car to go. And if the forecast is for storms, clouds, snow, whatever, it's it's just going to be off, and I'll just have to watch it from here if I can see through the clouds. But uh, no, I'm just going to drive up and uh, and uh, go to Niagara Falls. And if I get there and the clouds come in, the falls are still beautiful. I'll just take pictures of the falls. Yeah, that that's that's one of the things I learned. It's 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 worthwhile to go someplace that's interesting to see. In any case. <laughs> and then you don't feel quite so bad if yeah. if you don't see the eclipse as well as you might. You going to do photography or are you just going to eyeball it? No, I, I'm going to do the same as I did on the, the 2017 eclipse. Use the, uh, the Canon with the telephoto lens. Set it up on, a, uh, on my uh, Polari tracker before the eclipse. Then once I've got the program set going i just uh then i pull out the and eyeball it have you looked at the um at the scheduling software options at the scripting software well remember i had uh sit and see uh last time and it okay. works great with a canon and it it's very predictive all you have to do is tell it your latitude longitude it'll compute all the times for you and predict exactly when you and it'll beep at you and tell you to take the uh put the lens cap on and take it off and all that good stuff or take the filter off yeah i was going to suggest that we um that we talk about software next next month next meeting yeah uh, and I, I'm, I'm glad you have experience with that one i'll uh well since i do have experience with that one i don't want to change because i know it works <laughs> so. well that's important yeah <laughs> yeah um Got to have, make sure we look at the options because some people will have Nikons and some people will have. Um, I'm not sure if that one works with both Max I, and. Uh, I, I don't know. I I know it works for Canons. That's all I can say. Yeah. I, all I right. Don't have a Nikon. Never we'll, had a we'll, Nikon. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to delve into that more next next month. Yeah. Candy, do you want to uh, talk next? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Oh, you guys are seeing my phone. Okay, sorry. I'm, I've called it and I dialed it on my phone, so you're not seeing me on my Mac. But um, 
Yeah, I, um, I'm traveling to Utah um, in October. Um, we planned a backpacking trip, my husband and I and a friend of mine. And so we're going out there and um, I actually booked an Airbnb a year out knowing that it would be difficult to get something. And um, it's going to be right at the center of the center line, which is really cool in Torrey. Um, this will be my first attempt at photographing an eclipse. Um, I don't have any super fancy equipment. I'm using a Canon DSLR, and I do have um, a sky watcher. I have never used it to track the sun. I've only used it um, at night. So uh, this will be interesting. Um, we are traveling, well, I am traveling to my best friend's home in Texas um, for the for the total eclipse next spring. So, um, so hopefully I'll have my lessons learned <laughs> from October by then. And uh, if I screw up anything really royally, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get something decent next spring. But um, she, uh, her, her mother has a piece of property. Um, I'm checking with her to see if she would be interested in letting people come either to set up um, and just take photos during the eclipse or, um, or to even camp there if they need a place to stay. Um, she hasn't gotten back to me on, on that yet, but um, she is right outside Colleen and, um, and uh, uh, another small town there, um, Topper's Cove. So uh, she's a pretty uh, low-key lady, so um, I think at the very least she probably wouldn't have any issue with people coming and setting up in the field. Um, there is a little bit of light pollution there towards Colleen. I've taken some night photos out there before. Um, I haven't actually scoped out the direction and all and the timing or anything for the end or for the total eclipse next spring. So I don't really know which direction I would be looking from her property. Um, but um, that's it. I don't have currently don't have a really good telephoto lens. Um, preemptively, I bought a solar uh, filter. <laughs> for a 600 millimeter lens that I'm keeping my eye on right now. And I'll probably end up pulling trigger on that in a month or so before I head out to uh, Utah. But um, right now I only have a 300 millimeter, which I don't think I'm going to be happy with. Any thoughts on that would be welcome. This is Charlie, I, uh, I did okay with a 200 millimeter. I don't think you really need uh, too much. Uh, although you know 600, it you might end up filling the entire field of view with it, but uh, but if you uh, I did uh, of course the last one with my Canon, and the one thing that uh, and I and I gave a little talk on this, one thing I uh, really appreciated was this uh, little solar finder that you know a projection finder that fit into the shoe of the canon camera to be able to accurately point at the sun and that that's kind of a almost you have to have it because you uh, it's it's just a pinhole with a little u-shaped piece of plastic with a pinhole in front and it's white plastic in the in the back and you just get a projection of the sun and you're able to center on the sun without actually having to look through a lens. So uh, that's the only thing I can make, uh, the only two comments I have right now. Um, Achim Oppolt has offered, he's going to try to do 3D printing of one of those, of, of a solar uh, uh, camera shoe alignment device. And he offered to make up a bunch if people need, if it works and, and people need it. But do you have a, commu a commercial source of one of those? I actually, uh, I think I bought it online. Uh, it it was, uh, it, I just Googled it and I found one online for eight bucks or something. You know, it was oh, pretty good. Yeah. It, it, it was cheap enough uh, that, uh, but yeah, I just looked for, solar projection camera shoe you know and and started uh looking around and i think i found it for about eight bucks okay sounds good andy i missed uh what what brand camera are you using i have a canon eos rp 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, Candy, Candy um, is it a half size chip or a full size chip? Yeah, it's full size. Yeah, so you probably could take advantage of a 600 millimeter. Um, yeah, I, do, I only have a four thirds, uh, you know, regular prosumer type T3. So, uh, yeah, 600 millimeter for yours might, might uh, be better. But for mine, the 200 was just fine. It gave me lots of space to center. I, I will throw out that uh, an annular eclipse that I photographed back in the 90s. I used a zoom lens as, as one of my lens on that. And with an annular, um, I had all kinds of multiple uh, shadows problem with that. Uh, so if, if you're using a zoom lens, I, I, I did not have an issue with uh, total eclipse, but with an annular with the ring of fire that got all kinds of funny bouncing stuff. I think if, uh, you know, there are ways to get around it, but just to be aware. You had flare, Dan, from the lens or? Um... No, I had uh, echoes. I had multiple. Uh, multiple images? Multiple images. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's one of the problems with zooms versus um, yeah. uh, what do they call them? Not base cam, base lenses, but simple lenses. No, prime where, lens. Yeah, prime, prime lenses lens. don't have that yeah. issue. There's, there's yeah. so much glass in a, yeah. in a zoom lens yeah. that you're at risk. Yeah, I don't use zoom anymore. <laughs> yeah, I used um, I used a 300 millimeter with a half size chip in 2017 and was happy with the balance between getting everything and not having to worry about precise pointing um, yet still being able to resolve, resolve pretty well. Um, the other thing, Candy, you don't really have to worry about the difference between solar track rate and sidereal track rate because you, you're just really keeping it in the field of view, not, um, you're not worrying about um, uh, elongated images with the kind of exposures you take even during totality. So you've, you've probably got a good setup. But I think the Sky Tracker and all those things have solar as a selection. Yeah, mine, yeah. mine do. Solar, solar was a selection on it. And I, it I'd, does, like, I just never used it. I'd also like to mention that uh, uh, I had a fully automated setup uh, for the 2017 uh, total eclipse. Uh, so much to the point where it was a little boring. So I got a APS-C size sensor on an 80 to 400 millimeter zoom uh, Nikon. And I shot at uh, two or three or four minute in intervals during the eclipse and then took some shots during uh, totality. And they turned out uh, very well. In fact, I had about one fifth uh, the number of photos. So it was much faster for me to go through those and create a, uh, uh, a mosaic than it was uh, to go through my uh, prime setup. But anyway, 400 millimeter lens times 1.5 gives you a 600 millimeter. I think 600 millimeter is the uh, sweet spot. And Charlie had his uh, 200 millimeter lens, you said? Uh, yeah, that was 200 millimeter, but it, it's it just happens to be the lar you know the longest lens I have. <laughs> sure, sure, and that's either a 300 uh, if you have an APS-C sensor, or or a 400 if you have a have the uh, micro four thirds. But it sounds like the T3 I think is an APS-C sensor, so that give you yeah. equivalent of 300. So so I guess my my point is that you can make pretty much anything work. I'm surprised about these problems uh, uh, that uh, Dan had with his, with his setup and the, and the uh, reflections he got, but uh, I was able to uh, make it work. And the great thing about it is that I'll take both with me to the 2024 total eclipse and the annular eclipse and so if my mount craps out or if I, my power supply doesn't work or one of the many things that's required to make that complicated setup work, 
doesn't work, then I can just hand hold and shoot just as long as you have some kind of vibration reduction or something like that on your on your lens. Probably I should clarify that the the issue I had, which was 20 plus years ago, was was with a, a zoom lens uh, during only during annularity. I didn't have it in any of the partial phases. And it, I was also using one of the uh, glass Thousand Oaks uh, filters, which was mirrored on both sides. So that added more internal reflection. So oh, okay. I haven't I haven't seen anything approaching that since then. It was only that one incident, but uh, yeah, it was a combination of a zoom lens, a mirrored, double mirrored uh, filter, whatever you know, a confluence so that that actually none of my annularity uh, shots were salvageable without a heck of a lot of editing. Well, I was lucky that I had a 77 millimeter uh, uh, filter size for the 80 to 400 millimeter zoom. And I put a, uh, it was a film filter, but in a, a regular filter ring. And that, that seemed to work out pretty well. You have to have that though, in order for that backup or for that method to work. So you still have a, a series of things that all need to come together uh, for your particular selection of equipment to work. And I think that that begs uh, begs uh, the need to do uh, uh, practice and and uh, you can even shoot sunspots any day of the week as long as the skies are clear and uh, and and get your your technique down. Greg, did you did you use the the zoom to change the the zoom factor during the eclipse, or you I just did not? Hmm? I had it set all the way to four hundred and just oh, shot okay. every every shot at four hundred okay. because that's six hundred equivalent, and that's really like I said the sweet spot, especially if you're going to try to get uh, a corona uh, during the uh, uh, totality. Right, because that'll give you a, a five millimeter equivalent sun disk diameter on the the full frame twenty four by thirty six. So that allows room for the corona, even with the long exposure, and a little bit of slop for pointing. Uh, you want to describe the rest of uh, of your travel arrangements since since you were just talking about the the camera. Where are you going and? Sure, sure. For, for the October annular eclipse, uh, the one of the friends I met during the 2017 eclipse is going to meet me in Albuquerque, and we're going to go to a friend's house and set up on his roof. He's got flat roofs, and uh, photograph the annular eclipse. I will probably use a little Rainbow Astro RST 135E for that with a uh, Astrophysics 92 uh millimeter uh aperture uh telescope and i haven't decided to use whether to use a regular uh astro camera but probably not i'll probably use a dslr and the dslr that i've been using in the past is a nikon d810 alpha although i do have the uh uh the canon uh astro modded uh r camera i think it's an ra is what they call it but I haven't actually been using that a lot. I've been using, again, the D810 Alpha. Uh, so that's uh, for that. And then uh, for the 2024 total eclipse, flying into uh, San Antonio because I have uh, good friends there, but driving up after a couple of days to Lampasas, which is very close to Colleen and Copper's Cove, there in central Texas, I have a uh, hotel, uh, Best Western, that I booked, uh, I think, in this maybe November of last year. And um, they're one of the few hotels that would actually look further than a year out. And surprisingly, they were uh, willing to uh, give us a reservation, both myself and my friend that I'm going to Albuquerque with. And since then, of course, they've scrubbed their reservations and raised their prices. And uh, but hopefully, uh, our reservations will still hold. Uh, and I'll do 
probably the same kind of thing there that I'm doing for the annular. Again, uh, uh, the whole idea would be to get approximately a 600 millimeter, six, somewhere between 600 and 650 millimeter, uh, uh, 35 millimeter equivalent, um, and just uh, shoot with that. The thing I am interested in is learning more about this scheduling software, because if I do that, I'll end up taking, uh, well, I may or may not need a computer, probably won't need a computer, uh, but would like to have one. The thing I've been using for a uh, fast and easy um, solar finder is this, uh, I think it's called Soul Keeper. Hang on just a second and I'll tell you exactly what it is. <clears throat> That's a nice array of telephoto lenses in the background there, Greg. Oh, those are those are actually uh, um, telescopes. No, uh, the, uh, the the cameras on the table. Oh, yeah. you're not supposed to see those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a Soul Searcher by Teleview, and I don't know whether you can see it, hmm. but it's the same kind of thing that uh, Charlie mentioned where you have a little pinhole in the front and then you have a smaller, uh, and then you, oh, sorry, here we go. That's a little better. Pinhole in the front, which is there. And then you have a little bit larger area here that the uh, uh, sun impinges on and you can uh, center it in that, uh, that tiny little hole. So that, that works out pretty well. Although I use that on a 105 for the 2017 and I'll have to figure out, uh, I think I've got a method to do that on the, uh, on the 92, I just have to, have to fiddle with it a little bit. So are you, uh, are, you, are you driving to be able to take all your stuff? No, flying. Flying? Flying to both places, out? yeah. Pardon me, what did you say? And shipping, you have it. No, no, not in this case. I shipped I shipped for the 2017 because I took a uh, AP400 mount and an AP105 and all and a, and a battery and all that other stuff. This time I'm going to uh, travel a little bit lighter and uh, take the uh, Rainbow uh, RST135 uh, mount, which is very small and can fit in an additional suitcase. So uh, with everything else. Uh, and then the uh, telescope itself has its own little, uh, uh, what's the name of the, uh, the case? Common, common case, anyway, a Pelican Air uh, case. And uh, if there is anything to ship, I'll ship it to my friends in San Antonio, pick it up there unbox it and take it with me in the rental car up to uh, uh, Lampasas. Okay. So it's kind of interesting that we're getting a collection of people in that Colleen, Copper's Cove, uh, Lampasas area. Lampasas is a little bit further west, but I think it's almost directly on the center line. So that's why I picked that and they happen to have a best Western there. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be sending out um actually what everybody sent in on the surveys and they were more precise on with more or less they i didn't demand to know exactly the zip code where they're staying but uh, i asked them to indicate where they'll be so you'll be able to go down the list of um of people and see if you want to try to hook up with anybody or just communicate and have backup plans or if you need a spare a usb cable know somebody um uh, it probably would be useful also for some people to know who has local contacts but i think uh dan alluded to something very interesting which was to join the local club i i hadn't thought about that but um where people are going and and see what their what their what their plans are if you don't have a site um yeah, it costs uh, 30 bucks to join the San Antonio Club. I figured it was worth that for a year. Yeah, yeah and, I and I think most clubs are, are about that order of magnitude. And uh, hey, you might learn something new. Uh, 
Here's I some joined Chiefland in Florida for the same reason, 30 bucks a year and, and uh, go to the Chiefland star party. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody want to volunteer their plans or shall I call on somebody? We, we got a bunch of people dialed in. Well, since since he's since he's using his camera, I'll ask Kevin. Uh, he's a, he's the one last picture who's showing uh, to describe what you've got planned. Oh, actually, it's been interesting listening to you all. We're just going to go to see it. We're visual, I guess, as your term. Um, we're not taking any cameras. Not going to do. Um, have don't take a telescope. Nothing. Um, and, and unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, uh, because our schedules are, are so, you know, kind of messed up in the fall, it's not 100% sure we're going to go, but we're, we're planning to. So consequently, we have not made any reservations, but I kind of figure, San, and the area that would be San Antonio. So I mean, between that, if some, if we can't find anything there, there's Dallas, there's uh, Austin. I'm sure there is a uh, hotel that is available at one of those places. And yeah, we might have to pay, uh, you know, more of a premium, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, those are also business cities, you know, so people are traveling for a lot of reasons, the eclipses, you know, and, and especially for the annual eclipse in October, you know, I'm sure it's probably not quite, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's definitely premiums already, but I'm sure that there's still availability but hopefully we'll make those plans within the next two say two or three weeks before the end of the month here um and then we'll just fly down there uh, but that's our intent um san antonio for the simple reason that um you know if it's cloudy um there's the alamo and there's riverwalk so yeah. you know we just don't want to um to go to some place that if we can't see the eclipse you know we will have wasted a trip not wasted but i mean it wouldn't have we would have had something else to do so um that's about it um there was an interesting graphic in i, I think it's in the great american eclipse website um where someone had plotted the points along the center line that are closest to every point in america and one of the things that shows up is that San Antonio, uh, Austin is the closest driving point to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but, uh, you know, <laughs> so I think uh, there's a possibility that um, just some of those cities will be inundated um, with, with people hoping to see it and that's not a bad thing and, and it's a long drive so it's not clear that a lot of angelinos will be driving to san antonio um and once you get on a plane then you can go anywhere it doesn't you know you don't have to go to, and you're probably more likely to go to dallas than to go to san antonio just to get the to get the non-stop but uh, that's one of the considerations and the other thing is the closest drive places from New York City and Philadelphia and uh, and some of those places may get uh, very inundated with people making last minute decisions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we got a bunch of people who are on and not not showing uh, showing their faces. Charles Murphy, are you there? can you can you talk about what you're doing? Yeah, I'm here. Um, so we're planning to uh, drive up to Rochester. Uh, um, we're not going to do any kind of equipment or photographing. We're just there to visualize it because I'm bringing my kids. And uh, um, I went to college in Rochester, so I'm kind of familiar with the area. And I uh, figured that would be something to see, uh, even if the weather wasn't great. You know, we were able to get a hotel um, uh, there um, was very expensive and I had to like check a lot of places to get a vacancy that was open, uh, but I did find a place. Um, and that was as of about a month ago when I made the reservation, well, actually a little more than a month ago now. 
Um, but uh, yeah, that's our plan. We're going to drive up to Rochester. Um, we've got a couple of days to stay up there. Uh, our last day will be Eclipse Day and uh, drive back the following day. Um, and I'm trying to get in, in touch with some of the, I don't see if, if, if my uh, my college, if they, if they have like a, an alumni group doing anything up there, I'll just make contact with them. I'm gonna try to make contact with, um, I couldn't identify any local clubs up there, um, at least in an online search. So I'm having a little trouble identifying. I came up with that same idea, like join the local club and see what they're doing. Um, but I haven't really found anything. Did, did you look at did you look at Night Sky Network? No, I've not tried there yet. They have a pretty good directory of um, of local astronomy clubs, and it's sort of I think it's sorted by zip code. So okay. you just give them the, the zip code or maybe city and state uh, for Rochester, and uh, it'll tell you uh, a couple of clubs in the area. I'd almost think between all the optics and RIT and the, and the places up there, there must be at least one decent club. Um, I know it's that, that was my thought as well, but nothing came up with a, an internet search. So I'll try that. Um, see if I can find any other info. Yeah. The advantage is even if, um, even if clubs don't uh, haven't been proactive about having a web presence, the, uh, the JPL people were, were proactive and digging up as many references as they could to try to, to find places. So Night Sky Network is, is pretty effective. Good, thank you. Yep. Uh, and we've got Anne. I don't know last name. Could you describe yep. what you're doing? I'm here, thank you. Hey, so it's very good to hear all of the conversation. I'm definitely interested in the software scheduling and when you, when, you know, next month when we have that meeting. Um, so we haven't made any plans yet. Um, um, probably interested in Texas and I need to look for those state parks if it's not too late even to do that. Um, I'm thinking that's probably what we're going to do. Um, but, you know, gosh, I mean, every time I've gone out and started looking, everything is already booked and I get very discouraged. So I have a feeling we're just going to jump in the van and go. Um, but anyway, uh, we don't have any any plans yet, um, but that's probably what's going to happen. When when I was looking at the Texas Hill Country, west of Austin and San Antonio, um, I went to Google Maps and just zoomed in to some of the areas and sort of figured out where the quasi-resort areas are and some of the rivers. And there were a lot of small places that might be hard to find um through the usual sources um but places with cabins and and um uh, just rural uh areas where people go to get out of the city and to cool off a little bit and a lot of the places are year round even though it's not really um vacation season in south texas and you might try just looking at the map for places uh, because in those rural areas, Google's pretty good about identifying businesses, and that includes um, campgrounds with and without buildings. Oh, that's and a great I just, idea. I yep, just I centered on, I just went through the, through the area where the eclipse actually passes and, and started looking that way, and I found some places that look decent. Huh, okay, I'll do that. It's uh, It's a little bit labor intensive rather than uh, the usual suspects, but you might try it. Okay. Okay. Um, that's most of the people who've, who've sort of fessed up. Did I miss anybody who's online who wants to talk about? Um, what, what Pamela and I plan to do is um, go to the area a little bit to the east of Cleveland because we looked at the, um, I looked at the, uh, uh, Jay Anderson's uh, Climo and uh, agree with somebody else who, who mentioned in the survey that for a couple of points more likely to be clear than in Texas, uh, it wasn't worth traveling all the way to Texas because there's, there's a bit of a lake effect 
that time of year that can clear the clouds right on the shore of Lake Erie. And uh, hoping that's a little bit true, uh, but mainly we were constrained and we were sort of within one day of travel. So we made reservations at the lodge at Geneva on the lake, which is an Ohio State Park Lodge. Uh, and we've stayed at Ohio State Park Lodges before and found them to be very nice. So that was a, a recommendation. And they still had rooms available, but that was uh, in April of this year. And uh, it's right on the lake. They got lots of land, uh, the, the, lots of cleared land. Um, and um, it's like a six or seven hour drive from here. So that, that checked all our criteria. And uh, when I was looking at that in the adjacent areas, it turns out there are quite a few state and local parks and beaches in the towns along the, the shore of Lake Erie. If people are still looking for places, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if the housing situation is any good at this point because we got one of the last few uh, rooms in the lodge, but uh, it is a, a summer vacation area. So there should be uh, places that have room unless people go into the eclipse have bought them all up or people have double booked it. Uh, uh, I also noticed, and nobody's mentioned, there's a, there's a New York State Park at Erie, um, I'm sorry, Pennsylvania State Park, Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, that looks like it has very good areas for viewing. There are no accommodations at that park, but um, Erie's a big city and uh, it's a little bit possibly less desirable than other areas for staying, but uh, the combination of a big city and a park uh, mean that it might be a decent place to observe also. On the uh, on the south shore of Lake Erie, so um, unless somebody has something to add about this topic, we can do some wrap up. So I think um, the September session might be better to do on the last day of August, uh, which is the full moon. Uh, that note is that note about one day past full is wrong. It is full moon. Um, and um, as I said, I, I suggest that uh, we might talk about automation software. Richard Growl, who is not on tonight, um, found some information about iPhone software. Uh, American um, Paper Optics. Uh, that company who makes uh, a lot of uh, solar viewing goggles hooked up with a software company that makes uh, iPhone camera software that give you gives you direct control. And I sent a note to the uh, Groups IO group, but uh, they're selling a, actually for free. They have a uh, an iPhone app, uh, an Android app. Um, but it looks like it's a dumbed down version of a um, complete iPhone Android camera control software. So there are a couple of options there, which we'll talk about, plus the things for the uh, DLSPs, uh, Set and See, Eclipse uh, Orchestrator. If anybody else knows of one, please let me know. Um, we might also talk in the future about tripods and mounts that are travel friendly. Um, the other thing I was going to suggest is um, maybe later in September, we do another hands-on once it gets maybe a little bit cooler. I don't have a specific date or location to suggest, but it would probably be somewhere further west than uh, Turner Farm so that we have uh, we make it accessible to uh, more people. And as we talked about before, maybe do it in conjunction with a uh, with a public event, either at Sky Meadows or Crockett, just do it earlier in the afternoon when the sun is clearly vis going to be visible. Um, and that's pretty much all I have. Does anybody else have anything to contribute, or they just want people to understand before we before we adjourn?
Alan, this is Greg. I've sort of been out of the loop for the last couple of weeks due to vacation and that sort of thing. But uh, all these links, the links to the groups IO uh, to register for that and uh, the other things that you mentioned, um, do you repeat those in your email? I don't remember. Is there a place where we can go and say, oh, okay, let me click on that and that'll get me to everywhere I need to go and then I can uh, uh, forage from uh, there. Yeah, I think I think in in I think in both my uh, certainly the last reminder a few days ago about this meeting. Okay, has the has the URL for signing up for groups IO. Okay, super. And Thanks. and and the um, it's at the beginning of this package. If you go to the the Bitly slash TSE twenty twenty four for this meeting. It'll be in there. The slides will be in there, and if you look at the slides, you'll see the um, uh, you'll see the URL. I probably should have an explicit thing in the in the resources that also includes it. We've got that one document in the resource directory under under Bitly that um, has a collection of ideas and things to look up and places to go. I should probably have a subhead for that. But that has references to books and and websites, and uh, that's a place where we have been collecting, I should say, okay. the books and URLs and videos that people have found to be useful, not just things that are out there, but things that actually add value. Is getting already getting to be a lot of junk and uh, uh, commercial places that say how to observe the eclipse, and really what they're doing is selling something and having a couple of factoids about the eclipse, but basically it's a sales pitch. So I don't want to, I don't want to include all of those, but if there's something truly insightful, even if it does come from somebody commercial, then that's fine. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I did have an aha from uh, earlier that, uh, and I've mentioned it a couple of times that uh, Kate Rousseau uh, has uh, three books on eclipses. Uh, I'm holding total addiction, but it, uh, one thing that she talks about is uh, total eclipses are such a a shared human experience and a strong encouragement to go to a place where there it's not just you and one other person. You know, all the the, the total annulars I've been to, there's been at least a hundred people there, and it, it's it's good to do that in, as part of a group because it's it's almost a religious spiritual experience, even if you're not a religious person. Just put that plug. Yeah, I second that, Dan. Um, I've I've been both on eclipse cruises and just ad hoc groups that got together, and uh, especially the uh, in 2017, being on a mountaintop with a basically two dozen people, and we got to spend time to. Uh, we were all up there the day before, and uh, got to say hello and uh, hear everybody's story and where they came from, and. Um, that was in the middle of nowhere, so nobody was local. Uh, there were people from Los Angeles and there were people from Paris on that mountaintop. And uh, uh, I liked the people from Paris because they went through exactly the same logical sequence that I went through that ended up at that mountaintop. So we, we confirmed each other that it was going to be okay. <laughs> See everybody again, and uh, thanks for all your contributions and the responses to the survey, things like that. So good night, everybody.